So let me show you where these parts are in the car. Start in the uh, left rear trunk under the tail light is the hydraulic control unit or pump. Scoot it way in the corner here, has 14 hoses going to it or coming from it going to the hydraulic cylinders. Those cylinders are, as I've said before, the tonneau cover lift cylinder that is basically located roughly around here behind the sheet metal, of course, raising and lowering the tonneau cover. Then we have the main lift cylinders, left side and right side, sitting at about this angle. Very easy for you to see and to get at when the tonneau cover is open. And we have the bow tension cylinders or rear bow cylinders, roughly about this length, located about here behind the uh, canvas inside the top. Then we have the two latches. You've seen them in our video on manually opening and closing the top. We have the tonneau cover lock back here in the center behind the rollover or sports bars as Chrysler calls them. And of course, lastly, we have the uh, rear bow lock that is located under the tonneau cover. When the tonneau cover is closed, the rear bow latches into it. And with those seven cylinders and the pump, we control the whole top operation. We'll show you in great detail how to take these parts out. We'll also explain what can go wrong with them. We'll do some troubleshooting and uh, hope you enjoy learning about the system. So here are the seven cylinders and the pump laid out on the floor, roughly in the relationship that they are in the car, except for the pump is in the far left corner, um, uh, mounted upright. Uh, next to it is the tonneau cover lift cylinder, which uh, lifts the tonneau cover, of course. And towards the middle in the rear, we have the rear bow latch cylinder that you saw us latching in the manual opening and closing video, same as the tonneau cover latch cylinder in the tonneau cover latch, which uh, obviously latches the tonneau cover. And we have the right and left main lift cylinders that do most of the lifting of the top up and down. And we have the left and right uh, rear bow cylinders, also called uh, bow tension cylinders, that do the lifting of the rear of the soft top. So what can go wrong? Why are we talking about all these hydraulics? Well, the hydraulic cylinders in these cars will all eventually fail once until uh, they've been rebuilt by top hydraulics, then they should never fail again, at least not for the next 30 to 50 years. So what happens is the cylinders will typically first leak on the bottom where you wouldn't expect it and um, the pump can have various uh, failure modes and let me explain in a little bit more detail. So let me talk about the failure mechanisms in the hydraulic cylinders first because typically the first thing that you will see going bad in your hydraulic system is the main lift cylinders leaking. Uh, main lift cylinders are mounted like this, kind of at a 45 degree angle. And typically, this is, one, this is the left one, typically you will see them leaking first from the bottom. Um, it will look as if you had a leak from a hydraulic line going in there, but it actually is one of the seals inside the cylinder that seals the plug uh, leaking first. Then, shortly thereafter, it will leak on top the same way. Then uh, you'll, you can have uh, leaks from the um, rod seal that seals the rod sliding in and out of the cylinder and um, potentially you could have leaks from the hydraulic line o-rings but those practically never fa fail unless one you have brake fluid in the system or two somebody has incorrectly installed the hoses or just messed with the hoses, excuse me, and um, reinstalled them incorrectly, pinching those O-rings. But if your hoses have never been disconnected from the cylinder and you haven't had brake fluid in your system, then these O-rings for the hoses are not what is leaking. Instead, we get this question every day, practically, People ask us, can't you sell us the O-rings for the hoses? 
And we always answer, no, it's not the hoses, it's the cylinder itself leaking on the bottom. So there are seven seals in a cylinder. Gland seal, or plug seal on the bottom that seals the bottom part of the plug here into the cylinder housing. The top gland seal, there is the rod seal again that seals where the shaft slides through. Then there is the piston seal that um, isolates the upper and lower chamber and that can uh, leak internally. And there are the two port seals for the hoses. So seven seals in total that all have to be replaced. It is silly to do only one or two because eventually they will all fail. And very importantly, this is not a do-it-yourself fix. Uh, it takes some precision mach machining First, it would be easy to cut the cylinder apart, but how do you put it back together? There's some very price, uh, precise machining involved in taking these cylinders apart, putting them back together, crimping them back together the, the way the factory did it, and uh, having precision CNC machined metal inserts that actually accommodate the new seals. So fortunately, top hydraulics can do this. We do it every day, and we do an excellent job of it, if I may say so. So uh, typically we would expect these cylinders to last some 30 to 50 years after we have rebuilt them under normal circumstances. The other style cylinder that is in the car is these cylinders borrowed from a Mercedes. Um, they will typically first, the lock cylinders, which is the rear bow lock cylinder and the um, tonneau cover lock cylinder, these will typically leak first from the rod seal uh, where the uh, shaft moves in and out, but eventually these guys have built-in port seals that are not O-rings. Those port seals will eventually leak as well, same as the gland seal that seals the gland uh, to the cylinder housing. Now let's talk about the pump. There's a bunch of things that can go wrong with a pump. I don't want to scare you, just point them all out. Here we are, this is the way the pump is mounted inside the car. We have a reservoir with a maximum minimum uh, level on it and obviously this reservoir is filled through this uh, fill plug and you can't really overfill it because uh, if it was to fill to above maximum while you have the fill plug out uh, the fluid would all run out. So. Um, you can fill this pump, we'll have a separate video that uh, shows how to fill it with um, either Mercedes Fluid 0009899103 or you use the equivalent of what um, Chrysler originally put in here that is Pentocene CHF11S. Both fluids are very good and both fluids uh, are okay to mix with each other. Now, if you take a close look at your pump in your car, you may see a lot of black here inside the reservoir. The black is sludge. It is parts that have rubbed off on the cylinder walls while the uh, top was moving. It is particles of seals that are decaying and just generally um, tiny metal parts um, that are circulating in the fluid and that love to settle inside the reservoir or on, um, on the walls of the reservoir. So the sludge in the long run is not good for the pump. Anything that uh, grinds a lot wears out faster. So at some point you want to siphon your old black fluid out of the pump as a preventative measure and put in some new fluid. Um, but that's not really the main failure uh, for these pumps. What uh, goes wrong is uh, several internal valves can fail, not seal properly anymore. There are these uh, four solenoids that direct the fluid to the various cylinders. We have anywhere between one and three solenoids uh, activated at the same time when the uh, pump is running to do the various um, motions of the top. And of course, uh, there is a, uh, an oil seal from the rotating motor shaft down to the electric motor um, that will eventually wear out, as will the pistons inside the pump and um, various seals throughout. 
So a bunch of things that can theoretically go wrong. Another thing is if the pump accidentally gets flooded, meaning there's a lot of water dripping on it, yes, you can have the motor failing, you can have the solenoids failing, or you can just have a combined failure of several parts. Let me just show you for completeness, there are two relays in this uh, pump, which are for left and right rotation of the pump. Typically, for most operations, the pump rotates clockwise, and for some top operations, it rotates counterclockwise. Um, one relay energized will make the pump turn in one direction. The other relay energized through the computer will make it turn in the other direction, and um, it does its wondrous things moving the top around. So these relays can uh, go bad with time. One, if they get wet, the contacts can go bad and build more and more resistance. The relay heats up at the contacts, and worst case, the contacts could spot weld themselves, which will then keep the pump running even though um, you are not uh, trying to move the top. If that were to happen, then the uh, pump motor would eventually burn out unless you disconnect it in time. Again, don't mean to scare you, just mentioning that for completeness.